Hello everybody and welcome back to this new episode of Textile with Alberto. Today we're going to talk about polypropylene, so how it's made, what is it? Stay tuned, I think you'll enjoy what I got for you. Hey guys, I'm Alberto and I'm a textile technician that lives and works in Italy. Today we're going to talk about this, which is a polypropylene yarn, so what is it? Polypropylene is a synthetic fiber and according to the European regulation, polypropylene is a fiber formed of an aliphatic saturated hydrocarbon linear macromolecule where one carbon atom is the two carries a metal side chain in an, an isotactic disposition and without further substitution. I know you haven't understood anything about this like me basically. You just have to know that polypropylene is like nylon, polyester, it's a synthetic fiber. It comes from the polyolefin fibers, so it's compared to PE, which is the polyethylene. Polypropylene is the same plastic used for food contact and for Lego because it's not toxic and it maintains the same level of moisture. You can find polypropylene basically everywhere, also as a flacoon, for example, or for cans. So it's a very well-known and very used plastic, also in textile. Today we're going to discover how polypropylene is used in the textile world. Polypropylene, since it's a synthetic fiber, is resilient and resistant, so it's very hard to tear apart a polypropylene yarn. It's very strong, basically. The heating point is around 165 degrees, but it depends, of course, from the manufacturer's one peculiarity is that the specific weight is less than 1, so basically it's 0 0.91, something like that, so polypropylene basically floats on the water. And that's why polypropylene is much used, for example, for ropes, used for ships and boats applications. It dries quite rapidly and no iron is needed. Another fantastic perk about polypropylene is color fastness. In fact, color fastness to dry, wet, rubbing, perspiration, acid and alkaline is fantastic because polypropylene compared to other fibers like for example cotton, wool and so on doesn't absorb water so the only way to, to dye the polypropylene is basically dope dyeing or mass dyeing. Indeed, the polypropylene is dyed just with master batches. As I said previously, it's the same plastic of Lego, so it's perfect for babies' products, technical products and upholstery. Since color fastness to light is not so good, um, UV stabilizers are very commonly used for polypropylene extrusion. Watch out from Eco Design because I've found several times, really several, several times, guys, that polypropylene is Eco Design. I know that. Uh, you don't use water to dye polypropylene as for cotton, linen and so on. So also with polyester you have to use water to dye the fiber. In this case, since it's dope dyed, you basically extrude along with the master batches the polymer. I know it can be compared to eco design, but it's not so eco design. It's always been like that. Polypropylene is dyeable just with master batches as for PVC and all other plastics basically. So if you say that polypropylene is eco-design, also Lego is all eco-design or PVC profiles and fixtures are all eco-design, I don't think so. It's up to you guys to consider that. In my opinion, polypropylene is a fantastic fiber. It's used for technical textiles and a lot of different, different applications, but uh, it's hard to for me to consider polypropylene eco because it's basically plastic so it doesn't deteriorate during the time you know but anyway let's talk about the cons ironing especially without steaming it's very very difficult for polypropylene because you melt the fiber the softening temperature is around 90 110 degrees so yeah temperature really scares polypropylene apart that's why polypropylene is not used, for example, for firefighters garment and aramid fibers are used because they are, let's say, fire resistance. It's not resistant to light and it's dope dyed. As I said previously, yes, it's great because you cannot use water to dye polypropylene, but this is a big problem, especially in the ready to wear. I mean, polypropylene is fantastic for the technical applications, but if I need, for example, to make a polypropylene sweater, I don't have all the vast colors that, and possibilities that I can have, for example, with a cotton sweater. That's why polypropylene normally is white or black. 
yellow, blue, but the colors are very, very much limited. And another cons, which is a really bad cons, is that if you need an over dyeing of the polypropylene because the color is not the, the one that you needed, uh, you cannot over dye it. And finally, let's see the applications of polypropylene. Polypropylene has different, different applications. For example, accessories, technical socks. For example, I have technical socks that I use to go to the mountain and polypropylene is fantastic. I think it contains something like 20% of polypropylene. Also knitting, circle knitting, seamless sport, weaving, upholstery. Upholstery actually uses a lot of polypropylene because polypropylene, as I said previously, has fantastic color fastness properties. And we still have industrial applications, ropes, fishing nets, along with poniamide, sewing threads, dye upper covers, indoor and outdoor carpeting, artificial grass and stay dry clothing. It can be full drawn yarn, tesselanized, texturized, fancy yarns, monofilament fibers and so on so on so on, but we will see that in different videos in the future. Let's say for now that normally polypropylene is a monofilament yarn that can contain different plies and filaments, 1, 2, 3, 20, 40 filaments, and polypropylene according to these filaments and the yarn count of the single filaments can be soft, hard, strong, less resistant and so on, but it depends on the applications, technical, ready to wear and so on. That's it for today guys, I hope you have enjoyed the content of this video, please thumbs up to the video and uh, yeah, as usual, stay safe, take care, I'll see you guys in the next video.